Hi, welcome back to another episode. Uh, first of all, this one's going to be really quick because I ran into a bunch of issues when I was going back and editing the uh, video from the last lectures. Uh, there are a lot of issues with the lag, um, especially with the... Uh, I'm just filming on my phone, so it's not a very high-tech camera. And so that's where a lot of the lag comes from between the sound and the video and uh, part of that is the video always like shuts off after like 20 minutes and starts a new file and so that also added in complications so again I'm getting better at it trying out some new lighting hopefully I have it lined up so that the lights will line up with these creases and it won't cause it won't cause too much glare but it seems like in general Video, uh, the picture tends to come out a little better uh, when the lights are back there versus on the sides. Um, only issue is it seems like there is some issue with these lights reflecting off my glasses into the camera, and I'll fix that later. But anyways, the main thing is, uh, one of the main issues last time was that I filmed for like 80 minutes straight, and it literally filled up my phone storage. So it cut out the video for the end of my lecture and so we were in the middle of a proof and I made sure to cut it at a point where I could just come back so let's review where we were uh, the image of fee is a it's not just contained in G prime but it's a subgroup of G prime and again so what's the context here so phi is a group homomorphism from group G into a group G prime and so image of phi is the set of points in G prime such that there is some element in G such that phi will map that element of G into that particular element of G prime okay so, let's see here. We want to prove that this is a subgroup. We need that this contains the image. We need it to be closed under multiplication, and we need to need it to be closed under... We need existence of inverses. I guess last time I said closure under inverses. Um, it's not quite the same, because saying it's closed under inverses, that sort of assumes that inverses exist in the first place, and that existence is what you're trying to prove. So anyways, let's prove this claim. So we know that phi of v equals e prime, and thus e prime is in the image of phi, right? Phi of v is e prime, that's because it's a group homomorphism. And so there is something in G such that phi maps that thing to e prime, that means that E prime is in the image. Of course, E is the identity element of G, and E prime is the identity element of G prime. Uh, so, if we have, let's say we have X and Y in um, the image of phi, what does that mean? What that means is that there exists elements uh, let's call them A and B that are in G such that phi will map A to X and phi will map B to Y. So we want to, so we have two elements in the image of phi. We want to prove that the product X times Y is in the image of phi. What's the natural choice to use? Well, we've introduced this A and this B here. Let's try multiplying them together. Um, so if we multiply them together, where will phi send those? Well, phi is a group homomorphism. So the phi of A times B is equal to phi of A times phi of B. Remember, this dot is multiplication in G. This dot is multiplication in G prime. Okay, so we have this equality. And, oh, hey, well, phi of A is X and phi of B is Y. So this is equal to X times Y. And thus, X times Y is in the image of phi. 
Um, now let's suppose x is in the image of phi. Um, then there exists an a and g such that phi of a equals x. So we want now we're doing closure. Actually, this is a little uh, wordy because I've already said this. If x is an m, let we're just gonna say let a be such that phi of a equals x. So now what we want to do is we want to prove that x inverse is in the image. Um, so again, we have this a. What should we look at? Well, let's let's see where phi maps a inverse. V of a inverse equals, okay, well, we know that we can bring inverses outside, so that's just V of a inverse, but V of a is x, so this is just x inverse. And thus, um, if x is in image of V, then x prime is in the image of V. And hence, the image of phi is a subgroup of G prime. And that finishes this proof. Um, and then, yeah, there's the only thing at the end is there's a few more definitions, and that basically wraps up this uh, lecture. So let's see here. We have, I already defined what HOM G G prime is. Um, Definition, um, end G is HOM G comma G, and, um, that's, that's it. That's all I want to say here. So this end G, this means endo, this stands for endomorphism. So this is the collection of endomorphisms of the group G, and it's just the collection of group homomorphisms from G into G. So another definition, um, phi and hom G G prime is an isomorphism if it is a bijective map. So if it is bijective. And so of course, equivalently, what we could say is phi is in HOM GG prime is an isomorphism if, uh, well, instead of saying just that it's bijective, um, another, uh, what that also means is that there exists a homomorphism there exists a homomorphism from G prime into G, such that if you compose those two maps, phi and phi prime, in either order, you get the identity map. So I'll, I'll write that out because that was a lot. Alternatively, um, there exists a free phi prime in HOM G prime G such that phi of phi prime equals, okay, so let's think about this. Where, what's the domain and codomain of this composition? So phi prime maps g prime to g, and then phi maps g to g prime. So we're gonna take something, we're gonna start in g prime, go into g, and then go from there back to g prime. So this is going to be the identity map on g prime. Meaning that if you take any element of G prime, then phi of phi prime applied to that element of G prime will be equal to G prime. So there exists a homomorphism such that this holds and uh, similarly phi prime of phi is the identity of G. Hopefully my power doesn't go out. Um, and yeah, of course here, this is just the same reasoning phi g to g prime, then phi prime, g prime to g. So the whole thing maps from g to g. So, 
definition ought G is the set of isomorphisms in um, end G. So this is a collection of group homomorphisms from G into G such that this group homomorphism is bijective. And this ought stands for automorphism. So we have homomorphism, endomorphism, and automorphism. Those are just some terms. We'll get more into the details on properties of those things later on. But yeah, this finishes the first lecture.